All right, Steve Chase here, and I'm really excited to uh, share with you guys a little bit of the math that you're going to be using in this next project you're doing, um, in this kind of island project or your geography project. You're going to be building a scale model, something like this guy here, and uh, it's a really rich application of ratios, rates, and proportional reasoning. Um, so just to kind of give you a look at this one that, uh, that a previous student had done, not to say years ago we ended up looking at anything like this, but um, there's a few things you might kind of see as you look at this model. Stuff like this that we can compare. Stuff like these little houses, um, these buildings, and these trees that the students put on the model. And one of the things you're going to want to get thinking about a little more as you get into this is how the, the sizes of these things compare. If this house was about one centimeter and this building was about three centimeters tall and this tree right here was about four centimeters tall, we want to kind of begin to compare those numbers to it to one another and ask ourselves, is that realistic? And does it make sense? Does it make sense perhaps with kind of the the height of the mountain ranges on this island? Maybe those are only two centimeters tall, but we've got um, little trees like this guy that are maybe three centimeters tall. So is that what we're going for? And do the ratios work? Does the scale work? Does it all kind of fit together? So you, hopefully you've grabbed a copy of this already. You can put your name in here, we're going to take a look at this together. And I, I first just wanted to kind of give you some of the language we're going to be using um, in this section, in section 2.1 out of your textbook. And you're going to do some, some work in this today, and this is going to kind of set up your ratio work um, for your geography project, for your island project. So we're, first we're talking about ratios, and we're going to get to rates later, which are different. So I just want to highlight a few things here. Um, two term ratios would compare two quantities measured in the same units. So for example, we could come back here and we could say um, house to building is one centimeter to three centimeters. And actually our ratio notation can look a few different ways. We might write it like this. It's one centimeter to three centimeters. Or we might say it's one centimeter to three centimeters. And any of those notations are acceptable ratio notations. Using the word two, using the, the colon, or using the fraction notation there. Um, likewise, a, a three term notation would compare um, three quantities with the same units. So if we were to go back, we could, we could talk about all three of those things. We could say that house to building to tree equals one centimeter to three centimeters to four centimeters. And then we're always talking in the centimeters here, right? These are, we're all, we're measuring the height. We're using those same units throughout. Um, part to part and part to whole, you're gonna see a little better later on here, but notice the difference, right? We're, we're either comparing two parts of a group to each other or one part of a group to the whole group. You'll see what I mean as we get going here. So a couple examples we'll look at. We'll get you going on some questions. Um, here there are 20 marbles in a bag. We've got 10 black marbles, we've got 4 red marbles, and we've got 6 purple marbles. So the first thing we want to do is write a two-term ratio comparing black to red. And hopefully you can see it already. There's 10 black. Whoops. 10 black, 2, 4, red marbles. And we could rewrite that in lowest terms. Or we could rewrite that um, in a different notation, right? 5 to 2 in the ratio notation using the colon, um, 5 over 2 in the fraction notation. Any of those are acceptable. So why don't you go ahead and uh, pause the video here, if you're tracking with me, and try B, C, D, E, and F, and then uh, take a look again and, and see if you got what I got here. All right, here we go. So uh, the ratio we just wrote there was a part-to-part -part ratio, right? We're comparing black to red, so it'd be part-to-part. -part. Um, number of red marbles to total number of marbles, we had four red. We had 20 total, so we could say four to 20. Um, or if you like, we could put that in those terms. We could say that that's two to 10. Um, and that again, or that in that case, we're talking about a part-to-whole Ratio. Um, ratio 6 to 10, I'll describe purple to black. 
And then a three term ratio comparing red to purple to black would look something like four to six to ten. Finally, a ratio involving all three colors. Um, we could say red to everything, red to all, red to whole, would be something like four to twenty. Um, you could use purple, you could say that six to twenty. You could use um, the black, you could say 10 to 20, or we could use everything. We could say 4 to 6 to 10 to 20, right? We got part to part to part to whole. Yeah, any of those work. Next up, Tamara's got a recipe for fruit punch that calls for three cans. I'm going to do some highlighting as right here. Three cans of frozen orange juice, two cans of raspberry juice, one can of orange juice. Bridge can to concentrate, she must add three cans of water. All the cans are the same size, to me one recipe of fruit punch. Lots of information there, but uh, let's see if we can kind of organize a little bit here, put it in the table. So the juice that she's using um, is three cans of orange juice, two cans of raspberry juice, one can of lime juice. So we've got three and two is five, and one is six cans of juice, and it says for each can of concentration, let's add three cans of water. So we've got to do a little math here. We've got to take our three juice times three equals nine water to go with the orange. Two times three equals six water to go with the raspberry. One times three equals three water to go with the lime. So now we've got 18 cans. Um, nine plus six plus three is 18 cans of uh, water there. So in total, She's going to need 24 cans of liquid for a punch. Now we can get into our ratios on this one. What is the ratio of... And again, why don't you try them? See if you can get those, and then we'll, uh, we'll look over them before we move on to the assignment. Okay, I'm just going to wrap up here. Um, orange juice to lime juice. Uh, in B, we're talking three cans of orange juice, one can of lime juice, and you could rate it in a different way. You could use any one of those notations, and that would work. What's the ratio of orange to lime to... Raspberry juice concentrate, hopefully you got that. Ratio of water to juice concentrate. So I took my 18.6 out of the table here, There's my water to juice concentrate. Um, did a little reducing, couple steps there. Got it down to three to one. So that should be the ratio we use. And then finally, what is the ratio of orange, raspberry, and lime juice concentrate? Okay, add them all up here, I got six cans to total punch. We know the total punch is 24. So in that case, we're talking 6 to 24, and again, we want to get that into lowest terms. So if we um, divide by the 6 here, we get 1, um, whoops, <clears throat> we got a quarter, um, and then as a decimal, so to convert that into a decimal, we want to take the top number and divide by 4, divide by the bottom, so our decimal is 0.25. Um, and then a percent, we just times by 100%. Right? And we'll do some practice with that uh, later on. We're not too worried about that for this chapter. Mostly just worried about your ratio notation. But it would be a quarter, 0 0.25, or 25%. All right, go ahead and again. Um, well, I'm going to say choose five questions to do the textbook. And challenge yourself, right? Start with some practice. And then move on to apply some more problems. And if you're getting those, move on and challenge yourself to some extent. Good luck.